Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode three of the Ketchup Mayo and Spud podcast. Um, Spud, you want to say hi? Howdy, gang. How are we going? Yeah. How are you doing, man? Are you doing good? Yeah, ready to rock and roll. Ready to rip and tear through another podcast. All right, great. And I'm here with my boy Ketchup. Hello. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice sounds really. I'm not. I'm a bit under the weather today, so please uh, bear with the slightly weird voice if it comes through. I might. I might have been able to get away with it if I didn't mention it. But hello, everyone. <laughs> Well, we I pushed the podcast hour back about an hour because 11 a.m. is just a little too early for catch up. So, but still, uh, you woke up and you're not quite feeling yourself today, right? Yes, I've been all right actually. All things considered, considering I've been you know isolation, staying at home, um, I've not really got sick at all. So I'm, I'm always, almost feel relieved that uh, I was able to go so long without getting ill in any way. You know, quite lucky. Until yeah. now, it had to catch up with me eventually, and that's it. <laughs> and uh, I want to welcome our first ever guest appearance on the podcast, uh, Mr. Midnight himself. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm I'm doing great. It's nice to yeah, have you with us. us. Thank you, man. It is, this is my first podcast, so <laughs> oh, really, nice. I do not know what to do. I'm just gonna chill here. It's chill, well, mate. That's it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah, about it's, it. It's going to be chill. Let's do it. Yeah, there's. Uh, this doesn't have to be too serious. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll. Uh, I guess we can just jump right into it. Um, so midnight uh, with your channel, I tend to notice that uh, a lot of your videos actually have more to do with lore and story details of Doom than like gameplay mechanics and stuff like that. Um, is that because that actually interests you more than? Uh, than the game? Are you more into the storytelling of games than the gameplay themselves? No, I think it. it's... I think I can present better the story of Doom than the gameplay. Like, I cannot explain how to play the game, like, in a better way than explaining the story. And I'm very interested in how the story of Doom plays out, so... I want to give my subscribers... You know, you get you get the thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so shit. you're 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 playing to your strengths. You think that that's yeah, what you do. To my strengths, yeah. What you do best, and so you stick with that. No, that's great. I mean, I I also showcase my gameplay, and I get a lot of comments that, oh, Midnight, you're very good at the game. I thought you were going to be like really bad because you only do videos on the story. But yes, I mean, Ultra Nightmare done already, so it's fine. Yeah, I saw that video. That was great. Congratulations. I think we've all made it through Ultra Nightmare at this point, right? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, damn. Yeah, we've all. Yeah, it was, fire. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where the the first time I did it, um, the first time I did it, it was uh, that you know, the sort of like the tr traditional way of what a lot of people do, where they do it a couple of maps at a time. Because I didn't have a lot of time back then, I was kind of doing it a couple of maps and then practicing them, doing the next one. Because I was like, I've gotten this far, I don't want to have to do it all again for crying out loud. <laughs> um, and then uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, I was just streaming myself, chilling out with it, just seeing how far we could get. Uh, and just yeah, reach the whole end of the game. I didn't expect to get as far as I did, but it was a it was a fun time. I, I love that say. it's like the, the the Doom Eternal V card. Like every time you go on like someone's streams, there's always going to be that one person who goes, have, "Have you have you finished Ultra Nightmare? Have you have <laughs> you got the golden skin?" Nightmare? It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> right, time to show off the skin. All right, I'll load up the menu. Completed yeah. it, mate. It happens to me too. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, to call Kali, but two times and I died to the, to, to the lava two times in a row. It was it, so it's you know what? painful. It is one of those experiences that it does feel like a one-off. Like you don't get to experience that again, being the like the first time to finish it. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It it is a very exhilarating exhilarating feeling, and uh, the I novelty agree. wears off pretty quick. But I right, yeah, I still remember the the first time with uh, Doom twenty sixteen. I um. I did Ultra Nightmare uh, on stream, and I hammed it up a little bit, uh, where because I I died just a couple times just before the Spider Mastermind, and obviously that's tilting because just all of that progress just to like lose it right at the end. It has yep. happened to me a couple and times. And I, I ended up having like this manic, <clears throat> manic scream that I went and uh, did, and uh, I think uh, the 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 media company that Bethesda hired to uh, do a, the 25 years promo, they ended up putting it in the in the 25 oh, years celebration it, trailer. It, so like that, that moment, that's my ultra nightmare moment put in the trailer. Like it's so, like, it's, it's oh. literally been like immortalized through that. It's so cool. That's so that was the moment you bet yeah. Doom 2016 for the first time. Yeah, yeah, on Ultra Nightmare, yeah. yeah. Ultra nightmare. Okay. I never yeah. did 2016 on Ultra Nightmare. It's no. just too hard for me. 
It's yeah, awesome. oh, it's um the thing with 2016 is <clears throat> it's like uh it I find it's weird. It, like Eternal and 2016 play very differently. And I find Absolutely. once you like you learn like the there's like a certain couple combos like the Gauss super shotgun um with like siege mode mastered it just sort of I don't know yeah it that game that game's way more breakable than Doom Eternal throw it throw down, throw down, <laughs> throw down a couple holograms and and have half the AI stop chasing you yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I never did like the combos I only did like plasma rifle and super shotgun and all sure. that stuff gotcha, gotcha. I never did the combos. You, you sort of reach a point where um, it was mine was a bit different because although I'd always wanted to try Ultra Nightmare, I think even though I played 2016 to death, I was like so all in on the multiplayer side of that game that I think I beat the I beat the campaign like once hmm. on launch, and then I never I never really went back to it. And um, before Doom Eternal came out, I was like, right, well, maybe I should maybe I should give Ultra Nightmare a go, having not even completed a Nightmare playthrough at that point. Oh Jesus. Um, <laughs> that it was, yeah. Mm. I gave it about five goes in one day, and was like, you know what? I just a tunnel's out in like a month. I'm just gonna <laughs> do more multiplayer player until, <laughs> until the tunnel comes out. That is so crazy. Yeah. That is like uh, in in this dynamic, uh, like me and Ketchup, like we're we're the most opposite. Because like I hear that, and I'm like, I have 750 hours in Doom 2016, and I haven't touched the multiplayer. <laughs> it's like, like it's such the opposite experience. I think it's really really funny. Yeah, uh, only replaying that campaign over and over again. Yeah, yeah, that was that was my thing for sure. My, it was my, a testament to how great the game was, man. The fact that you yeah. could go down those different roads and actually get, you know, because I I certainly was not alone. If anyone is listening to this podcast, I know it was a smaller community, but anyone that played that multiplayer to death will get it when I say that you can very much you could get hooked into that. You know, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's it, it didn't seem like much on face value, but it was a very very sort of detailed and uh, enjoyable, rewarding mode for me that's, personally. That, that's really cool. Absolutely. You know, my when I first beat Ultra Nightmare, I actually didn't get to celebrate it because I I was trying really hard, like every day for three weeks, to finally beat it, and then I got to the final level, and then I had to have like a small operation, and so I was in the hospital. Oh. I was in the hospital for like four days, and then I I got out, and then uh, I'm recovering. I'm on painkillers and stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, I still have the last Argent Denor level to do on my Ultra Nightmare run. And I and I beat it, and I'm like, all oh, right, I, I did it. <laughs> like all the hype was gone because I was coming back to it five days later and just doing the last level. Uh, and, but when but when I came up with the with the rules for for brawler mode, which are all those weapon limitations and all that stuff I put out, when I did that, I mean that took me that took me like a month of every day trying to get through it on ultra nightmare on um, those restrictions and when i beat that on ultra nightmare you man you better believe i was screaming like a maniac i celebrated bought everybody dinner yeah it was <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. my moment. well the other day on my stream when i beat ultra nightmare um when i beat it in like the one sitting because it's the video was literally just uploaded it was like a five hour video i didn't know how long it would take i had to leave it while i was asleep um when I finally did it in one sitting, which was like my next mission, I was like, right, I've done it a couple of maps at a time, but now I've got this day off because I finally given myself a bloody day off. I was like, I'm going to just see how far I can get. And if I can get it today, great. Um, obviously, high energies for, for, for most of it. And then it's like midnight no pun intended, where I am. <laughs> and I, I realized that I don't want to wake my neighbors up or anything. So when I would normally pop off, because I was super pumped internally, right, a thousand miles an hour, on the stream, I'm like, once I get final sin, I'm like, so oh, cool, did it. Yeah, I did. Oh, it. Right. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Well, well, well chuffed, well chuffed with that. Well, well chuffed with that. <laughs> no, I went absolutely ballistic when I did an Ultra Nightmare on, on Doom Eternal. Actually, bite me read it my stream, and he was like commenting over my <laughs> gameplay. I took like twenty minutes to kill the icon of in the second. I watched stage. that video, man. You're just like yeah. you're like dead focused. <laughs> yeah, but I I didn't notice, but bite me noticed it that I think an archival spawned on the last arena because a buff demon spawned, and I killed it with the crucible. And I was like, what the fuck? There's a fucking archival, and I didn't notice. I've yeah. never seen an archfile in the final scene. Yeah, fight. me neither. Me neither. But what's yeah, weird? Possible. I think it's it's literally the longer the icon of Sim fight stays longer, the more powerful demon's key will spawn basically. 
that okay, like, a I wise see. man did uh, once say the longer the icon of sin is on earth the stronger <laughs> yeah. he becomes it's pretty yeah it's pretty good I got a friend of mine that uh, uh, she only really plays Minecraft and League of Legends, and I got her to beat Doom Eternal on Nightmare a few days ago on stream, Ooh, uh, which was great. And, and that last that last uh, fight with the, the Icon of Sin, he just kept spend, spawning waves of Cyber Mancubus. It was no, that so sucks. bad. The RNG is, is not on his side. <laughs> My RNG was, uh, I can't remember if it was, but I, I know on my my full run, I, I did the whole thing was, um, I think it spawned, if memory serves, it was quite tame at the beginning, because uh, it's the, the first wave and the second one, there was like a revenant or so there, I can't remember the other demon, I think it was uh, super, super unimportant, because I can't remember it, um, but then it started spawning barons, and then it started spawning mancubus and cyber mancubus together. Oh, that sucks. It was, uh, it was all right. It, it, it wasn't so bad because I just I had I just saved my freeze grenade and stuff on really troublesome ones. But uh, yeah, I spent I, I spent half the fight thinking like, bro, really? <laughs> like you're just gonna throw all these at me? <laughs> I think mine, if I remember correctly, it spawned like sh shotgun, no, shield security guards, arachnatrons, and pain elementals like in big waves. So I was very worried about the pain elementals because mm. because they can literally melt you in seconds if you are not careful yeah so like they're, really they're, they're kind of like they're tricky like you see them and you're like oh that that fat slow guy with his skulls yeah. whatever <laughs> whatever and then just suddenly boom <laughs> all those skulls Damn. hit you and yeah they're on those spicy meatballs at you. yeah <laughs> yeah the spicy meatballs so oh, there's some uh, so there's some dlc coming out pretty soon uh at midnight i wanted to ask you uh, is there anything that, like, maybe you got, like, fingers crossed that you're hoping might be some kind of inclusion in the new DLC campaign levels? Inclusion in what type? Like, stuff I want to have in the campaign? Or... Yeah, like, okay, like, uh, like, in the last podcast, we were talking about how cool it would be to, like, maybe see the classic Doom 2 chain gunner get reimagined in Doom Eternal and maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe there could be a new enemy type that appears in DLC levels or or, or something. I don't know. Is there something that you would like to see like a new edition or more of something that you liked in Doom Eternal that you would like to see more of that in the in the DLC? Well, it does say that the DLC is going to include more demons and more special powers and abilities for the Doom Slayer, but in terms of demons, if they would add something else the sandbox of the game i think super heavy demons and heavy demons need to be like the new type of demon because i think if they add father demons it's just gonna be not that impacting but i think the chain gunner would be a really good addition to the sandbox of the game yeah they cannot do it uh hit scan because it's going to be really unfair plutonium experiment all over again <laughs> but the chain gunner would be really amazing. Actually, if you see the art book of Doom Eternal, there's a lot of concept illustrations of early models of the demons, and there are, there are some really good, um, literally, what's the word I'm trying to find? Uh, HP Lovecraftian types of demons. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. look really, really good. Almost like classic be, Quake. Yeah, basically, they, they look so, f can I say bad words? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> They look so fucking great, I want them in the game right now. It's software, please. That's it, demonetized. Oh, no. No, they, my, po profanity. my podcast don't light, get monetized light anyways. Light profanity, it's not in the intro. Yeah. 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 Oh, that, that's true, light profanity. No, I that's think, I think YouTube profanity. doesn't like to monetize videos that are not video, that are just audio. I think like it has an issue with that. Hmm. Well, YouTube. I... Uh, YouTube. Like, I don't why know don't was... you just go to Spotify then? Oh, yeah. I don't know if it was you I discussed it with Mayo, but uh, Doom Eternal videos have a tougher time with advertising because of the uh, the violence <laughs> in the game. So YouTube doesn't. Uh, let's just say, like, if you if you were to do like Fortnite gaming videos, you'd be like tripling or quadrupling. You like. Your well, that, well, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doom <laughs> podcast. That's it. It's Fortnite <laughs> podcast now. <laughs> But it, you know, problem? it's 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 um, I guess it's an interesting dilemma for like Doom Eternal content creators, because it's uh, 
It hasn't oh. been. You know what? It hasn't been that bad for me. Um, oh, yeah. But well, I was about I to think... say catch up. Like, uh, um, yeah. You <laughs> want to chip in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no. for those that I, I'll keep this 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 brief because um, I know this podcast isn't about me, but um, I do a lot of Mortal Kombat videos as well. Um, so Doom and Mortal Kombat are like my two favorite games. They're intertwined for me, and uh, Mortal Kombat, especially Mortal Kombat 11, is notoriously bad for almost every single video you try and make just yeah. get slapped by that demonetization immediately so like when i say that for me do actually hasn't been that bad i'm i'm kind of almost unintentionally saying it in comparison to mortal Kombat, which is like the worst case i've <laughs> yeah, ever experienced those um, uh, it's, hasn't yeah, it it's hasn't it gotten strange. better though uh, like i just remember the first three or four months where oh, launch it was horrific everything like, was getting no, an, that, an uppercut really, like, an uppercut crushing blow would cause your video yeah. to get demonetized any yeah. any money shots right any zoomed in anything and then it started to detect <laughs> red blood so creators tried to like add these horrible uh, color changing like instagram filters like emojis on the screen <laughs> it was I, so bad <laughs> i didn't I, Video where I specifically went out of my way to create the ugliest, most garish edit to block out as much of the violence as possible, and it still got demonetized. You didn't- and then I uploaded a video, which was uh, the Joker, who was a guest character, um, has a crushing blow where he 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 punches you in the testicles, and there's a very close money shot of that, and. I did a quick little two-minute video going over some Joker tech, which involves the move where he crushes your testicles, and that video got monetized. So crushing <laughs> testicles got monetized, but going out of my way to make block, block and censor all the close-ups got demon. I was like, I give up. I just give up. <laughs> they give you putting the tab in, in, instead of a gaming per um, like education, it will not get demonetized, maybe. Who knows? I've tried it. I've tried it because a lot, a lot of my it? content is tutorial focused. Yeah. Okay. So like, just call it. The, just call it Fortnite tips and tricks, and then, but your, your audience <laughs> yeah. will know what it is. What, Hello, what? Fortnite. Yes. Yes. That's just the Joker crushing your testicles. <laughs> my only experience with Mortal Kombat on YouTube was when I did a video about the Doom Slayer could survive in the Mortal Kombat oh, universe. I agree. And instantly, I put Mortal Kombat in the title because I think. In one point, Mortal Kombat was like hard banned on YouTube. Like you put Mortal Kombat in the tags, description, title, instantly demonetized. You put MK11, instantly demonetized. Yeah. I had to put MK11, no, II, for it not to get demonetized. It was it really stupid. Yeah, man, that's, believe it or not, that's actually still the case. Every time I use, every time I upload anything that's Mortal Kombat related, well, MK11, you know what? The funny thing is, classic MKs are kind of okay. Um, yeah. But They're eleven not, is too much. Eleven is just what well, it's 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 the one that's got all the all the what must be built in searches, you know, that YouTube uses. Yeah. So um yeah, a lot of the time you when I make any MK eleven videos, like I, I will never have <coughs> MK eleven in a tag, description, Man, that title. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying. But you know what it is? It's like uh, it's one of those. It's just one of those things where YouTube just it, it is the way it is. It's not what it used to be, uh, and you have to try the best you can to work around them. And if you can't, then it's at the very least it's kind of forced us to try and think of some other content types or just go about sure. making it a bit differently. You know? Yeah. In the in the beginning for Doom Eternal was it was a little bit really hard because I also well I do Doom Eternal videos. If you didn't know, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I uploaded a video about Doom Eternal, right? It, that was before Doom Eternal came out, like when we had like trailers and stuff. I only showcased the gameplay and all that, and all that stuff, and it got instantly demonetized. I was like, dude, it's not even that much blood. You're killing demons of hell. We're doing God's work, for God's sake, Susan. <laughs> Aren't you religious? Yeah, that's yeah. that's the crazy thing, though, is that it's not even, it's not even violence against other humans. It's it's yeah. violence these these monsters so it's almost like that in some in some cases when it comes to censorship and that that does play a factor in a lot of things where it's like is it human on human violence or is it you know human on uh monster alien violence so something that's not realistic Mm -hmm. and definitely falls into the not realistic category yeah it's it's very um i remember uh, hugo martin saying they tried to like obviously make it very gory and graphic but almost cartoony yeah Uh you know yeah like you said, with the analogy of this being Evil Dead 2, like super gory but cartoony at the same time, it's mm. basically that. I agree. 
Wait, what ketchup? What did you say? Doom Eternal is not realistic? <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, there might be Kaku Demon outside my house one day, but for now, it's there's none. <laughs> Damn it. Actually, I feel bad now when I kill Kaku Demons. Because basically, it has become the pet of the Doom community, and they do like super cute fan arts of the Kako demons. And I feel really bad when I've I kill. Them. I've seen a couple of those; they're really cute. Yeah, there's one of Doom guy like petting a Kako demon that is crying because beside him there's like a lot of death demons, and he's like, "Oh, don't worry, baby, nothing is going to happen to ch ch you," and he kills it. Have you guys seen the, the so Kako bad. Hell graphic, where it's the Taco Bell logo, but it's a Kako Demon head, and it says Kako Hell? Uh, yeah, I, I, really want, I want to make shirts with that. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I know which one you said. Hey, guys, if you want to um, click on the screen share, uh, Midnight sent us uh, a playthrough of Cultist Space, so we can have that playing oh, that nice. you guys can, uh, can watch. There won't, there won't be any audio, and I just figured we could have some of his gameplay going while, while we're talking. Do you want to know how many times I tried recording that? Uh, tell me. Like, 40 times. Because you wanted it to look good. Yeah. <laughs> I got the gameplay. I respect it. I respect that. Gameplay. Yeah. But I was, right. I was so chunky. I was... Right, I, didn't, I haven't played for like five days. Uh, that's this okay. Is one, this is one of the savage ones, man. I know it's anyone that's done uh, UN or anything like that in the past will always agree that Cultist Base is, is one of the absolute hardest levels. Um, when you first start off, but yeah, this yeah. is the master level, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is the master level. Yeah, I recognize all the demons at the start. Yeah. I'm really, really, really hoping for some more master levels, almost, and almost like not only that, but yeah, just some even more increased difficulty. Because once you've you've actually fully kitted yourself out, these master levels become extremely manageable. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but still, they they get in some parts of the arena they get so so overwhelming because of the amount of demons there are. Mm -hmm. Even like the father demons get in your way, like you can dash and stuff like that, so it gets kind of hard. But well, we're gonna you know get how, salty too. You know how you uh, midnight you made a video uh, in the Doom Hunter, uh, the Doom uh, Fortress, where it's like a wave survival kind of glitch. You did. Oh, yeah. oh I remember yeah, watching yeah. that. I tried to copy they, it. They need, they need to like if we're talking about the future of Doom when it comes to like, adding more master levels and whatnot. I swear they should add a wave survival mode of some kind yeah like an actual legit absolutely. one because yeah. it like that that's that's in like the doom in, uh community sort of vibe you know uh, like a lot of them play absolutely. those kind of shooters you know that are you know like serious sam-esque you know and and all if you look to doom 2 wads that are still being made to this day by the community like a lot of them now are like slaughter maps where it's just you know, mm -hmm. you in a massive arena versus ten thousand, you know, no. demons. I mean, we're not going to get yeah. ten thousand demons in this engine, <laughs> but you know, it'd be it'd be great to have wave survival. I'm really, really wanting to push that. Yeah, uh, after I I, after I made that video, like I saw on Facebook groups, like the Doom Facebook group, and on Reddit and Twitter, like a lot of people like making the conversation. Oh, hard mode on Doom Eternal will be so great, and yeah, mm -hmm. I think the community really wants that mode. So. I think its software can maybe not capitalize, but hey, dude, it's like the community wants this. They really, really, really want this mode, so you should do it. It would be really if, cool. If you think about it, it wouldn't take that much to to balance and work on in comparison to something that's like player versus player. Like you know, if you're doing say like battle mode, that that mode needs so like constant tweaking yeah. and adjusting because people are finding new metas and testers didn't discover certain things and whatnot like whereas in the campaign they've already spent obviously a, a very long time over the years developing the campaign a lot of the demons are already balanced you know it's just how you develop a map and the amount of demons you chuck in and what types at certain certain events so i feel like I, yeah even if it was it wasn't manageable it was like too broken like hard i'd love it you know i would really challenge. like uh, one of the things that hasn't really ever been touched on um is just how fun it is to go after other demons while playing as a demon like one of my favorite parts of the entire game is maybe it's because i play revenant in battle mode but um when you get to control the revenant on this level uh is actually for me one of the most enjoyable parts because pretty much all of the all of the the sort of weird little movement tricks and attacking tricks that you can do with the revenant in battle mode 
uh, exist in the single player. You don't really use them, and it's not really necessary um, because it's so you know so free for you. Cause you don't, it's almost impossible to die in that portion. But the act of shooting at demons with the revenant is really fun for me. Oh, yeah. And on the I subject agree. of having some kind of like a horde mode or a survival mode, I would love some kind of mechanic where like similar to like Doom 2016 where you had the demon rune. Like if you could like get a demon rune and almost like as like currency and spend it at a certain point. That's a great to idea. Become one of yeah. any of the, the current playable demons to like, you know, use them and have some kind of edge versus a wave. Because like, can you imagine like being super methodical with it and you know what's coming next and you know what the strat will be versus this wave of this crazy amount of demons. So you spend your demon rune token to become like the Mancubus and when they spawn, you know, you just pop the flamethrower almost immediately to like melt down some key targets or whatever it is. Um, and then, you know, when the time runs out, you go back to human, but you want to make sure that you've done enough damage to the main demons to make the demon rune count or whatever it is. Like that would, I thought that would be a really cool mechanic to almost like merge Eternal mm. and 2016 together in that respect with a new mode. Yeah, because, uh, well, can I talk? <laughs> Are you yeah. done? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, mate. Um, one of the things. Hands up, hands I... up the talk. <laughs> <laughs> can I talk, please? Um, one of the things, I'm going to, I'm going to say heresy, the emperor would not be pleased, but. Um, one of the things I don't, I do not like about Eternal is that there's no true player versus player, like with the same abilities. Like we have Demon versus Slayer, that two demons versus a Doom Slayer, but we do not have like, you, you know what I mean? Like same guns, same abilities, player versus player to see who truly, multiplayer. yeah, traditional multiplayer to see who who truly is the better demon or who is the better Slayer. I think they could. Add a mode like I don't know, Slayer versus Slayer and Demon versus Demon to see like, oh man, fuck you, I'm the better Marauder. Oh yeah, let's see, one v one against the Marauder. Let's see who's the better Marauder. Let's see who has the better Doge or something. I don't know if you guys agree with that. I think it's a, I think it'd be yeah. cool. I, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know why that isn't. But I mean, I know that I think it's because they don't want to distract from battle the, mode like that, they want mode. that to be the thing you know maybe that could come later but i can i can see why they didn't have multiple multiplayer modes at launch at least oh, okay i mean well, they're going to add it's esports to battle mode as well ugo has mentioned it so it's going to be okay absolutely fucking great yeah well i mean we, we we have the we have the competitive activity with the uh friday night fights at the moment which tokyo and i do um but uh yeah. the, the biggest thing that we've we've often heard them say in interviews and stuff whenever battle mode is mentioned is that they they, they truly believe in it and they they've wanted to provide a unique doom experience um and it, I, I almost feel really bad for the team because the, the the biggest thing that i see when when i guess like the the more open audience talk about multiplayer especially if they didn't really play much battle mode you, you see a lot of people almost like demanding yeah uh, a, a a classic style multiplayer because you know certainly definitely to, to say one of the biggest things that people say is you know oh no one ever really knew doom for its multiplayer so who cares but like it's almost not true because just how much of a deep multiplayer culture did, mul did doom have back in the day before loads of games came out you know the, the, the sort of land culture of it is is a huge part of the game's history just classic classic doom um but i almost feel bad for the team because i don't i almost it almost seems like they had no reason to believe that so many people were like would have wanted a traditional multiplayer because man i tell you when doom 2016 came out people would not stop complaining about the multiplayer like every youtube video every person that tried it on stream anyone that wasn't hardcore like you know myself and just kind of silently sat and enjoyed it and found other people that enjoyed it and you kind of just you know joined discords and chat it wasn't as much of a content culture back then uh, even in 2016 for doom there wasn't as much content sure. about it but um the people that were talking about it were extremely vocal in how much they hated it and they were like this isn't doom you've got loadouts this is like more like halo man oh, and everyone was just constantly constantly complaining and um, the people that really enjoyed it weren't speaking about how much they loved it because we were all playing it, you know? We're like, okay, well, you can you can dislike what you dislike, but I'm going to just play it and have fun, yeah? That was kind of the mindset. So I almost feel like the team had no reason to believe anyone wanted it back. <laughs> like, <because laughs> they've, they've gone in a completely different direction for battle mode. 
Um, yeah. And the, 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 the very same people that were really vocal about how much they didn't like 2016 are like, yo, what the fuck? Where's the proper multiplayer? Like, it's almost like they're, they're entirely separate entities. Um, and considering I was um, very not sure about Battle Mode when I first saw the trailer, I was worried that I wouldn't like it. I've ended up loving them both equally, which I really, really am sort of like super relieved about. But yeah, they're definitely different. You know what I mean? Like if I if I ever want that kind of multiplayer, I, I kind of go back to Doom 2016 and play that multiplayer instead. But I would obviously love, from what you said, Midnight, I'd love a mode where it's like 2016, but we have all the movement because it would just be ridiculous. It would be ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah watching everyone slingshotting to the air and bunny hopping. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I just got a comment. That Marauder dodge you did was awesome. You got that, that cool. triple shot and then you side dashed away from his melee and got another combo. That was really sweet, man. I was sweating so <laughs> badly there. <laughs> Sick, man. I think also regarding like the multiplayer, I mean, id Software have still got Quake Champions going in the background as well. Yep. And they're still going ahead with the Quake Pro League and promoting the game. And so, you know, like, I'd, I'd assume they probably don't want to compete with, you know, sure. one of their own that's, brands that's and games. That's a fair point, too. Deathmatch as well, you know, which is yeah. basically, I mean, it's got a Doom guy in it with double jump. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they do, not, they do not want to overshadow um, Quake Champions with Doom. Which I agree too. And don't get me wrong, I fucking love battle mode to death. Like it's, I really, really like it. It's a very con fun concept. And as you said, catch up. Like the very people that said that Doom 2016 multiplayer was like, oh my god, this is not Doom. This is like fucking Halo 4, which is basically kind of true because it's the same company that developed Halo 4's multiplayer. Yeah, so. separate team. Yeah, separate team. But yeah, now those same people are in here in Doom Eternal are like, where the fuck is Doom 2016's multiplayer? Bring back Doom 2016 multiplayer. So you're like, bro, you said four years ago that you didn't like this multiplayer. Now you do, like, what the fuck? Like, get a grip, but yeah. yeah that's I, the meme with that guy that's going, he's shaking that person going, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Tell me what you want. I'm, Tell try me. I'm trying to imagine it. Like, I'm looking at this gameplay right here. And I'm just trying to imagine, like, how do you have a meat hook in in like in eight versus eight Slayer deathmatch arenas? Like, I'm just like, how does it? I don't even know how how this like would actually work. Right. It could, the meat hook could would almost have to be like a a separate pickup or something, like a power upgrade or a buff. You know, something that's on the map that appears and you take it, and then your super shotgun now has a meat hook. Like, yeah. Surely not everyone, can, or you've got a limited amount of meat hooks. So you would surely not be able to have. Just infinite. imagine a chain of oh, the, slayers the is all game. connected by meat hooks. <laughs> no, imagine this: having the meat hook with a cooldown of one second. Uh, <laughs> everyone is like flying in the air because the cooldown is like so so oh, man. so low. So yeah, just break it. Just out. break it and release it. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I was breaking and release. <laughs> Every time I talk with Ugo, I'm like, Ugo, you should do this. And he's like, okay, what? And I tell him some crazy ideas. And he's like, dude, you just want to break the game. And I'm like, dude, it would be so fun. Like the 12 arch files in a maze or just add the chain gunners and fucking hit scanners in all the arenas to make it super hard. And he's like, no, Neto, please don't. Yeah. You know, I, I, would love, I, would, I would love some kind of uh, modifier, like, because look, you were in the, a global shutdown right now. No one's at the offices. I'm sure that whatever they work on is taking three times longer than oh, it yeah. would, right? Um, and but one thing that I would love to see to the game is is modifiers, like in the menu, where like play nightmare campaign, but all glory kills and chainsaw kills give one half of the resources or something like that something where they don't have to change ai or positioning of demons they don't have to change anything they just they don't have to tune anything differently in the combat but they could just make it to where you get less health back or you get less ammo back or or double double the recharge time of your equipment mods like just like gameplay modifiers that you could put in for for a second run that that was something that that would be something that would make me very happy 
Oh, to add some I like a level of versatility in the game. Yeah, because like, like, I, I, I like doing that to myself. I like saying, okay, I'm going to play now with. Uh, uh, I'm only going to let myself uh, pick up this. Or this time I'm going to disable the button that lets me change my grenade type so I can't use the ice grenade. Like, not just in Doom, but I like doing that in other games too. Saying, okay, I can't, I'm going to play God of War, but this time I can't use the, the lightning orbs. So I like, use the boy. Oh, yeah, you can't use the boy. Yeah. Right. I, I, like, I like doing that kind of stuff. And if I could go in and, and say, you know, reduce how much health you get back or all armor uh, pickups now only give you two armor points instead of five. This is all that kind of stuff. Just stuff that they wouldn't really have to de dedicate a lot of dev time to. They would just be little sliders that you could do to adjust, to adjust the game and just make it more difficult for people who want that challenge. I would love yeah, it. Yeah, little details that can make the game even more fun. Or like it's already super enemies, fun enemies recover twice as fast from glory kill stagger. Stuff like that, you know? Oh, well, like, oh yeah, modifiers like the ha skulls from Halo. Uh, I'm going to take your word on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I yeah, I, I do, I, memory serves, I do uh, know what you mean, though. Um, yeah, it, it's just an, an idea of being able to create challenge without having it, having to be sort of almost personal challenge like having there be something built into the game that might even have rewards for doing it rather than just i'm gonna do it and record it and that's basically the end of it right yeah yeah i get it yeah actually yeah. Talk, talking about rewards what kind of rewards would you like guys like to have in the game like skins and stuff like that uh i want a doom 2016 revenant skin for battle mode i will that's all i want for christmas <laughs> really mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, i'm with you on that i that's one of the few demon designs that i actually like better in 2016. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's just so grotesque and it's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, it's so dis disturbing. Kind of, yeah, man, dude, I'm a, uh, I'm all into the edgy stuff. That's why Mortal Kombat and Doom are my two favorite games. But <laughs> you know, what kind of rewards? So, I don't, I don't, know. Oh, I, don't I, I don't think we'd we'd ever get it. But the Quake Three Arena Doom skin, I, oh, sick. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I just felt like that one got a pass. All the other skin, skins made it in the game. But I mean, I guess it's not technically a a Doom title, is it? But I, I always like the the Quake Three Arena Doom skin. It just uh, something aesthetically pleasing for 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 me. I'll go. I'll go a step further. I want a two D Doom skin. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just I, I, I want a two two yeah. D <laughs> model. <laughs> yeah. Or, or that'd be great. Yeah. Or like like what they did with uh with the Resident Evil Two remake, where you could play as like PlayStation yeah. One Polygon Leon and Claire. Like that's just so great. Yeah. It it's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't. I, th I didn't think about like skins from other games. So I was going to say like a classic gold Doomerine skin or gold Sentinel armor skin will be f fucking metal as hell. I'll be cool. What oh a, yeah. What about um? What about like classic music option? Like the midis. Yeah, like the yeah a, a Doom sixty four and a Doom one and two uh, music option as you play. I, th I, mean, I feel like Doom 64 wouldn't work purely because there's so much noise and action that I think even the sound effects alone would likely drown out a lot of the ambience. Yeah, it's a little too ambient, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not as much music as it is um, ambient sounds and that, which is sure. obviously wonderfully put together. Like I love the soundtrack for Doom t uh, 64, but I think retro would uh, the 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 even older game still would more likely have a, a better sort of soundtrack that you could put on there. Fair enough. Um, I was on uh, I was on stream a little while ago, and somebody asked me uh, to make a list of like all my favorite demons. Like, and so I did a list of my favorite demon all the way to my least favorite demon in Doom Eternal. And I thought that maybe an, a top five list could be something fun to talk about today. What are your What are your top five demons? Uh, they don't have to be in any particular order, but I do need a number one. I do need to know your favorite demon. And why? And then give me the other four. Um, who's gonna? Oh, Midnight, you're our guest, so I'm gonna start with you. Mm, okay, my favorite demon, I'd write the get go. It's going to be a controversial one, but it's the Marauder. All Probably right. because it's so fun to play against. It can get frustrating, and even more when the other stupid demons, like soldiers, shoot at him with his blast with their plasma <laughs> pistols, and he spawns the dog infinitely. I, I'm like, I dude, please <laughs> stop spawning the stupid dog. Dude, I'm not shooting at you, bro. What the fuck? But yeah, he's so fun to play against. In the design, everything 
like the vo the voice sector of the Marauder, the design elements, everything about that demon for me just screams fucking heavy metal. So I'm all in for that shit. And my other four will be the Hell Knight, the Baron, the Doom Hunter, and I'm between the fucking Cyber Demon or the Prowler, but I wouldn't know. I would go with the Cyber Demon if he was more aggressive, but he's not that aggressive in the game. So I will go with the Prowler. So nice. those are my top five. Awesome. Uh, catch up. Um, I mean, it's almost like ironic how we're right up at the Revenant clip, right as I'm saying this. But um, <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. God, God Cyber Revenant. I mean, Revenant's, I mean, he's just always been my favorite demon. Um, loved him in Doom 2016. He was my favorite demon to play in the multiplayer. Uh, visually, he was my favorite demon anyway. And then in this, it's just, you know, to the extreme because he's really fun to play in battle mode. And again, I actually, on a single player standpoint, I actually really like fighting the Revenant too because uh, he's you can just be so kind of snappy with your range damage. It's just satisfying to just see him and go, bah, 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 and he's gone, you know. Especially when he freaks out so much. Yeah, that Cyber Demon's going ham. Look at it. <laughs> oh my god. What is happening? Barrel. Barrel. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I've never seen him that proud. He, he, he was just annihilating everyone. Yeah. It's like that clip of the Cyber Demon against the Spider Mastermind in Doom 2. Yeah. Like in map 19 or 18, I don't remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, yeah, what are the other yeah, yeah, so I uh, really, like, I actually really like the Kaku Demon. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, Kaku, so good. it's a really, really just cool demon. I prefer the Kaku Demon to the Pain Elemental, um, personally. Uh, but what else? Do, what's my favorite demons in the game? I mean, it's not something I give a lot of thought. Honestly, if you ask me for a top five, Marauder's always going to be in there because I too, I mean, I just think that Marauder adds a lot to the game. Like as especially like I'm, I'm sure we can all agree as someone that has played Doom Eternal a lot to the point where, you know, we can all memorize the game now. Even Ultra Nightmare isn't as much of like a never beat it challenge as it once was because we've all just learned more about the game. Um, so the Marauder, I think, is a nice, healthy addition because without the Marauder, this game would almost risk being way too easy. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, everything becomes method and the Marauder is the one demon where it's not just you know that it's not going to be just another day in the office every time because there's always the smallest chance that one little thing could affect him and then he summons a dog or he'll move or dodge or whatever, which is just enough to throw a spanner in the works. And I, I do like that variety. You know, it is the spice of life in it. So the Marauder yeah. is a healthy addition to the game. Um, apart from that, I, mean, I, I love the Cyber Mancubus too, actually, got to be said. I do. I actually, I love a lot of the new additions. Uh, the Cyber Mancubus, I know he wasn't a new one, but he's really fun in this game. Uh, the Arachnatron, a, a great addition to the early game. I love that they brought mm -hmm. the Arachnatron back and it, it plays such a huge part in kind of like the combat puzzle, you know? Uh, but yeah, other than that, how many was that? Was that four or five? I, I think that, was that five? No, you, you said four. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, aside from that, you know what? I do like Pain Elemental as well, so I'll say five yeah, for Pain Elemental. Right. The Grandpa. He's just sick. I really love what they've done because I love, I love how meat hook heavy it can be. Just yeah. like that that platform that floats around that you can meet hook it's a nice piece <laughs> spud you're up uh top five demons that is a good question i'd say uh to be a bit uh i guess boring it's not like one of the big super demons the the whiplash should be my top one mainly because he's such a pain in the or chi rather is such a pain in the backside to deal with uh especially a lot of the, the closets they sort of put them in uh, yeah. the, the level designers they use um, her very well yeah yeah uh, i can think of two key moments that really tilt me one until i was aware of it and started using the ice bomb on it is there's like this uh small corridor that you pass on uh doom hunter base where one spawns on the right of this oh, yeah. like, four-pronged room yeah yeah after one, right after a prowler too yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah that spot there yeah, that one caught me off a couple of times in my first runs, and I was like, wow, that is a really cheeky spot, because it's like <laughs> such a tiny room, man, you know? Um, anyway, uh, what do you call it? Uh, and then uh, on, uh, I think, Necrovall Part 2, there's a Marauder and a Whiplash together. Oh, that's fine, I think. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And I just find that combo, until obviously now, you know, the metas, you can deal with like the Marauder a lot easier, but back in the first week or two of the game, that was like just such a brutal room to deal with. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Whiplash number one. 
Uh, number two would be the Marauder because of you know what you gentlemen have said before. You know, there's there's a bit of a combat puzzle with that guy, unless you pop an ice bomb over his head and then just lock on with the, the rocket launcher. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, um, Doom Doom Hunter because that that thing's just a beast. Yeah, uh, very Archwell fun to fight. Would be four, yeah, definitely. Especially when there's a couple of them in a room, ridiculous. Um, and the fourth one will be Archvile, just because, you know, he's he's always a cheeky bugger chucking in. Like he, he's not so much of a pain until he does that spawn where he he basically brings in a whole another wave. Yeah. And that can really catch you off guard. Like that is actually, like next level when 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 he completes that. Um, uh, I know on Taras Nabad did that small room with the blue teleporter. Um, that he's he's very menacing in. And then finally would be the Cyber Demon slash Tyrant uh, for all the new Doom Eternal kids that are like, well, it's not the Cyber Demon, bro. It's the Tyrant. Um, yeah, the Cyber Demon. But I, I'm number five, just because aesthetically I love the Cyber Demon, that he looks like the Doom, the original Doom one. But my issue with him is that he doesn't feel that, I don't know. I don't. He doesn't feel dangerous. It's like, too easy to him, I think. Yeah. yeah, like in Doom, t- Doom One and Two, the Cyber Demon was like your heart started like going crazy because you start getting heart palpitations because you're just like, wow, all I need is two rockets from this fella and I'm dead, you know. And in uh, in Doom Eternal, he's he's basically uh, he's, he's a only su- dangerous he's a if you stop moving. Demon. He's a support demon. Yeah, yeah. but. I feel like if you stop moving, that's when you start taking damage from him. But otherwise, like I swear, I've never died from a tyrant in the game. I, I really haven't. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I, I don't remember ever dying from a tyrant. No, so yeah, no. that's my top five. But I, I didn't mean that in a, in a super negative way. I just feel like I just wish he was a little bit stronger. So that's why he's my in, he's number five and not one or two. I remember the cyber demon having presence, you know, and threat. Where the moment the cyber demon appears, it becomes your absolute primary focus. And yeah. although that still stands true in this game, because you you want to get rid of him, um, mm. he hasn't got the kind of like, you know, he's not necessarily the demon that's really the one that's pressing you, right? The one that's pressing the advantage and being the one that is establishing the threat. It's like you guys said, he's he's more of a support. Unless, like, unless right there's now. three of them, like in that one room in yeah. Final <laughs> Sin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit. but then by then I've got Crucible ready to go. Yeah, of course. Um, so I've normally got a couple of those. But I, I realize yeah. now, by the way, that you guys are talking more about gameplay rather than just pure up what's your favorite. If it's gameplay, obviously Cacodemon's not in the top five for me. Doom Hunter takes that place because I really okay. love fight. I love fighting the Doom Hunters in this game. I think they were introduced really well. The boss fight is a, a great way to almost like test how much you've learned about the combat at that point. Because, um, I mean, think about when you have to fight the Doom Hunter boss battle. It's like... You're a, few, you're a few levels in, and by that point, even the most brand new Doom player would have learned a lot about the combat. And then here comes the Doom Hunter to go like, right, this is your first big test to see how much you've learned. It's epic. And then at that point, yeah, it's it's really well done. Uh, and then obviously, you know, later down the line where it becomes just a, a, a super heavy, you know, I guess. Um, it's it's just a, a great development. And I, I think the Doom Hunter brings an absolute ton. I really want to see playable Doom Hunter in battle mode, actually. I think you could do a lot hmm. with that. Nice. Actually, now that you talk about the Doom Hunter and how he's like the first real test in Doom Eternal, I want, I, I think, like, the insight of the developer is like, oh, so, okay, you are beefed up. Here's a Doom Hunter. Kill it. Oh, you killed it? Here's two. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how you do. <laughs> you, thought, you thought this was over, but now there's double. <laughs> there's double Doom Hunter. Actually, now that you mentioned um, Spud. The, the part of Necroll Part 2 with the Marauder and the Whiplash, that little arena. Yeah. When I did my pistol run on Nightmare, that part took me like fucking <laughs> three hours. <laughs> Just because of the Whiplash yeah. and because yeah, the room is imagine. so small. My goodness, it gave me PTSD. <laughs> mm. I'd like to, I'll do my, uh, my top five. My number one, without a doubt, is the carcass. I, I I think he looks cool, but the way he functions, uh, those two devastating long range attacks and that that sneaky spinning melee attack that he has, it catches me off guard when I think I can get in close to him for that one shot kill, and then he just starts spinning like a madman. 
<laughs> but the the shield, I think the, the shield is just such a game changer. Um, I mean, I've I've never really played anything like it, but the way he's able to protect other demons from getting glory killed or box you in when there's two carcasses and you just can't even move. I just think the carcass is, is really, really cool. The Marauder is not my number one. I know I'm the Marauder video guy. The Marauder isn't even in my top five. I love him. I absolutely love him, but there's demons I love more. Um, the Whiplash, but I'm totally with you on that one. Whiplash is probably my number two. Um, she's just she's just awful, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> something that you she's really, unfair. really, really hate, and, and that's... Uh, that's something I really love in games. Um, I'll also say Doom. the Doom Hunter is incredibly fun to fight. Um, and then after that, um, I'll probably say the Prowler, because I just I like how it can just suddenly be behind you, and you think everything's okay, and then suddenly a Prowler's behind you, and you've Nothing lost half Nothing personal, kid. Yeah, you've lost half your life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, at the bottom of the five, I'm going to put the, the, just the classic Mancubus. I think the Mancubus adds so much to the the chemistry of the fights. Having that big, high HP tank that's half Jump. or full screen, just shooting those really accurate high damage projectiles at you. I think it, it, it kind of changes the game. I think that's when Doom Eternal starts to get really cool and fun, is, is as soon as the Mancubus shows up in the cultist base, the game changes. And you have to really, you have to really consider him every time that he shows up. I mean, and plus, he he looks amazing too. <laughs> yeah. Now, now that you mentioned it, uh, Mayo, uh, the carcass. If you want to really like appreciate the AI system and how the AI works in the game, the carcass is like a perfect example of how the AI works in Doom Eternal. They're so like, smart. Yeah, they are so smart. Like, you think that, oh, yeah, the Kakas only spams his fucking shield in the air and that's it. But no, he spams it in a in an intelligent way. He has cock blocked me so many times. So many. So frustrating. He'll protect them. himself. He'll protect other people. He'll, other people. Yeah. He'll it's... protect even the Marauder, even when he has a <laughs> stupid shield already. It's so unfair with the carcass. <laughs> He's so he killed, great. I think he was one of the demons that killed me the most in Ultra Nightmare. It took me like 15 runs to complete Ultra Nightmare. He killed me like six times. Only he goes all face laid on you. You go close range to try and get him, and he does like more damage than most demons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, He's like one of the demons that the close range uh, attack is so devastating, like with the Kako demon as well. Yes. It, it, so he hits you twice, strong. too. He, he does this weird erratic spin it, because you can get a one shot meat hook super shotgun on a carcass, but you gotta be like dead center. To get yeah. it right, and you you're like, I got this carcass, I got him, and then you zoom in and you shoot, and he doesn't die, and he just starts flipping out like a madman, and it's <laughs> it's it's bad. Yeah, it's basically R and Jesus with the carcass as well, with that super shotgun shot, and with the prowler too. You can one shot him with a super shotgun if you if you get like that center too. Yeah, you got to be pretty accurate to get uh, get those like mid tier demons with one shot. Mm hmm. Um, carcass. Well, uh, I don't know if there's anything else you guys uh, want to talk about today. Um, it's been about an hour. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, close it up, I guess we can uh, all just talk about what we're working on right now um, on our channels or uh, or any other games you might be playing right now. Uh, it, anyone got uh, anyone got a whiff on modding for the game? Is there any like news out there circling? I haven't seen anything. My side certainly haven't, but. I I do. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, sure. I've seen because they said they said in 2018 that there there was an there would be an initiative somewhere in the roadmap for it, but that was that way was back. So, uh, I think they're gonna do it to like one of the key elements about Doom is modding. So they just cannot like take it away. So and there's like really talented people in the community that can do some great stuff. So I think they will do it. I would love to see user levels for this game. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Just all, Actually, me, all me. carcass arenas. 10,000 <laughs> revenant room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking about modding, did you guys see the post of the set of them on Reddit? Uh, no? I, no, I didn't know. 
well, someone extracted the model of the hooded figure from the game oh, wow. and no. took away the hood of the figure. It's the face of Samuel Hayden. Ah. Oh, okay. Him. Yeah, it's Legit? him. I can, I can send you the link if you guys want to. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I, I want to see that. Because yeah. I know there's I know there's uh, people who say that the Seraphim is definitely not Samuel Hayden. And so I, I, I haven't dove like far into that debate wow. but but if there's if the model actually oh wow there it See, is the hands would probably be a giveaway and that's what probably maybe someone was like digging deep hey yeah but look, look at the face it's 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 him fucking sammy Unless... he's like more slender than he used to be than he mm -hmm. is now he was like buff in the new like <laughs> modern timeline yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. That's wild. Looks really cool as well. Uh, Midnight, you working on anything uh, for your channel right now? You got any? Uh, well, can well, you give us a preview of uh, what uh, your, your next couple of videos might be about? Well, this picture I just sent you is going to be part of today's video. So okay. I'm going to be oh. talking about how the set of him is playing some insane 4D chess in the story of Doom and how the Doom Slayer is basically his pawn for being the ultimate god in the universe so it's gonna be great nice <laughs> cool. Interesting. Um, it, it's, it's a lot here about the future stories and stuff too which i hope they elaborate on yeah me too i'm slaving away on my official doom eternal review for my channel uh should be out in probably three weeks uh it's gonna be oh yeah good. how's it going it is uh it is a long process <laughs> biblical <laughs> I, you know like uh i i like to show clips of every little thing i talk about i'm obsessive about it and so i've got probably 200 video clips that i have to record two to three second clips in a that all take up uh, a video that's probably going to last maybe 40 minutes it's it's oh, a big it's crap. a big review it's a long long script it really goes into the things that I like about the game. You know, a couple of things I don't, but uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I'm I'm really happy to finally be doing it. But it is wake up in the morning and get to work on video editing until I go to sleep, and it's gonna be like that for a while. I think till I finish. How, how much time does it take you to to edit videos? Mm, like uh, the whole process. Uh, I mean, it depends on what I'm doing, you know, like that plasma okay. rifle video I put up today. I mean, that was, you know, that, that wasn't too long. Um, but if it's something like, like my Resident Evil 3 review, you know, that was probably, or, or, or like my, my it movie analysis that I just did. Those are anywhere from 50 to 70 hours of, of work. Holy and crap. It's a lot. It, lo it, <laughs> it is a lot. Um, and I mean, I, I spend a lot of time on the audio editing, uh, but the just getting the clips, you know, because it's not it's not five minute clips of just like one clip and then talking. No, like there's every three seconds the clip is changing. So, but I do it to myself. <laughs> I make that my style. So it, things take that's a mood. They take a long, long time to put together. Uh, I mean, my God of War video was three hundred hours of work. So I mean, I've gotten better at it. I'm this this Doom video. The longest part was the script writing and the audio editing. Uh, the video part isn't nearly as bad because that's just like, okay, go in, record what I need to, and clip it and put it where it needs to go. But it is, it is quite a long process. Well, it's going to be an amazing video. I can tell uh, you that. I hope so, man. Yeah, you um, crush it, man. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks. I just hope I just hope people like it. Um, what's, it's always uh, worth it. It's huh? worth it when you... It's always worth it to have it finished as well. Like, you... To like to, to work as hard as you do and then to have like the end results there you know people enjoy it and that it's a very you know I'm, well i'm sure we can all relate it's a very very nice feeling it really yeah. is I, I i feel like i feel like we're coming up on or at least for me i'm coming up on kind of like a, a closing the chapter like i'm i'm still finding things i like to talk about in doom eternal but like putting out this big review three months after the game came out is kind of like my way of saying okay I've said what I have to say on Doom Eternal. I'm going to keep playing it. I'm going to keep uh, keep talking about it when I have something to talk about. But uh, you know, it's it, I, you know, I can't talk about Doom Eternal for five years, right? So um, um, you're challenging me. Uh, okay. Well, 
your channel well we don't have the same channel <laughs> but uh, like you you blow me away at midnight like you're like the the stuff you're able to to put out and find and and put in interesting ways that's uh, you got you got a skill for it man it's really good thank really, you really good uh, thank you thank you but I, I, I don't know how far my way of thinking about the game is going to be able to take me. I don't know what I'm going to f- be able to find in, in three months. So I kind of want to give Doom Eternal a big, a big sloppy kiss with this, uh, with this review and then, and then focus on some other content, but still keep, still keep Doom as, as, a, as one of my priorities. Yeah, you need to, yeah. You need to keep it fresh. Yeah. Uh, it's good to have... Oh, okay. No, that's okay. I just feel like I'm talking too much here at the end. Mm. Uh, no, you, you always have to you have to branch out to other things and that because everything's uh, you know a single player game without modding is kind of you know it has its lifespan. You know what I mean? Of course. The beauty of of Doom One and Two, particularly Doom Two with the modding, is that uh, it really is eternal. Like for me, uh, on my stream on Twitch, I've played Doom mods on and off in between my Quake. Uh, gameplay for, for like two years now you know and uh yeah it's just endless so that's why i brought up the the sdk discussion at the end because i, I honestly feel like it gives things gives games a lifespan longer than uh they could ever possibly imagine you know um so Dude. maybe fingers crossed that might happen in the roadmap you never know and then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're so making good. videos for the next two years it would be so good i'd be so happy to to, to have that uh, catch One up. thing. Oh, okay. No, go ahead, Mike. Midnight. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. No, go for okay, it. I got excited. Okay. One thing I don't want do like the community to do is H Doom Eternal. Please do not. Just don't do it. Yeah. Marauders. Please don't. Come on. Don't do oh, it. Good. What will they do to the tyrant? Oh my goodness. Oh, no. Like, no, I'm more scared. Launcher? I'm more scared for the whiplash. Yeah, <laughs> L- lip- lipstick in a bikini. What's going to happen to the con maker? The oh Jesus! The pawn maker. I'm gonna, just, <laughs> I'm gonna just pretend that this conversation doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, edit it out from the video. Oh man. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so if anyone would like to uh, submit their fan art for the next podcast, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is the email to send it to. <laughs> Please, Ketchup, you working on uh, anything? Uh, what's what's next uh, with battle mode? Um, it's a bit of a tricky one because it's the balance patches are coming in quite quickly for it. Um, like they're, they're they're changing a lot of the balance here and there. So um, there's been enough. So what I want to do is um, there's been enough time from launch to now that. 100% like a meta has been established. Like we know what the the, the popular weapon mods are. Uh, you know, for example, you know, we know that the destroyer blade is way better in battle mode than it is in single player. For example, um, lock on burst isn't used as much as uh, the remote detonation as well because you're Hey-o. spamming them and stuff like that. Yeah, like remote detonate's really, really powerful in uh, battle mode. And it's like you know, if you're demons, these are the upgrades you take, and uh, these are the power upgrades you take. Your know, double team heal is really good. Um, my whole point is that I want to now make a video that is essentially. Uh, where we are now like this is what the meta is this is all the stuff that is taken so basically mostly because if if you're on the fence about trying out battle mode and you want to just jump in or whatever uh you're not going to be information overload it's just a video that documents where we are with the scene good players what what demons are being used what weapons are being used and just lay it all out in plain sight to be like as of this day this is the matter of the game and it it, provi- it would provide both information for people that don't know much about it and it's almost like a kind of like a half tutorial and for those that really like it this is more of a documentation video that we can go back to you know in a year <laughs> with the game having you know different maps or different demons or balance changes all over the place and then almost like look back and think what did the game used to be like you know what i mean so it's kind of almost like a two in one i've got like 70 gigs worth of battle mode footage to, to go through and use for it that I haven't even come close to capturing, but um, now I'm a bit more available. I can actually, you know, sit and try and get it done. Plus, I want to make a Revenant highlight reel because I've got some really funny Revenant clips from Battle Mode that I want to put up together. I also, actually, I want to, while I'm here, I really want to give a shout out to like Jihad, Devastation, uh, King Dime, 
uh, I was informed a few days ago about there was a big Classic Doom multiplayer activity that was going on. Uh, they were trying to round up as many players as they could doing deathmatch at the same time in the collection of specific servers. Uh, the WOD you used was just a master file full of different free-for-all maps. And basically, uh, that was almost an entire day of just... There was like a hundred of us in all these different servers playing old Doom Deathmatch with each other. And a whole bunch of us just captured our own, you know, POVs and recordings and stuff. So I will be turning my experiences with that into a into a little video as well down the that, line. I've that sounds hype, man. I can't wait to watch yeah, that. Nice. That it was a fun video. Funny. I'd never played I'd never played classic deathmatch before in old Doom, so the whole thing was new to me and it was really it was a good time. Was it, it a mob? It wasn't so many. Uh well, you know what? I did better than I, I did better than I expected, to be okay. honest. Nice. Well, you, you can give your you can give your Doom guy all these different voices. So mine just had all the voice lines of Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> so Spud, it's do you have anything Doom coming on your channel soon? Uh, for me, I'm working on like a a bit of a personal run for Doom Eternal. Uh, but I want to I want to make it a pretty solid one. Um, see if I can get a good time on it. And then something that's really it'll, it'll it'll brush on Doom Eternal, but it's like an overall sort of epic uh, little mini doco I'm doing, uh, sort of like a bit of a rise. I've still got to get a title, but it's going to be like the rise and fall and rise of Arena FPS. It's like a discussion oh, yeah. of the evolution of basically deathmatch to dueling with Quake, Doom, Unreal Tournament. Then a plethora of other sort of arena FPS uh, clones, and then it's sort of it's hibernation, and then the resurrection with like the attempts from Epic Games with Unreal Tournament that sort of floundered because it was a community-based effort rather than an initiative that had a lot of uh, strong direction uh, from the, the development team. So that became a bit of a messy production. And then Quake Champions is a solid game, but I think maybe released a bit too early. So. Um, in development, in early access, so there was like two two attempts to bring it back, and then we've got this game called Diabolical coming out, and that feels like it yeah. might spark a bit of life in the scene for not not just its its own end, but I genuinely believe it'll bring bring a bit of life to say like Quake Champions as well. Like um, they say in the business world, competition is good, so I actually think Diabolical coming into the scene and bringing a whole bunch of kids over from Fortnite and God knows what else. Apex, Call of Duty. Uh, it should be interesting. So I think it's I a really good time to do a video on on that subject. Yeah, Diabotical was a lot of fun. It's uh, it's uh, it's just nice to have more. The more the merrier with this kind of genre. You know, sometimes yeah. the issue would be having not enough to play, so you can you kind of just feel like you might burn out. And if you have multiple games to juggle between, sometimes that can really help the burnout. Mm hmm. Uh, it'd be interesting. What happens uh, this year? That's gonna be a fun video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I guess that pretty much brings us to a close. Uh, another successful episode of Catch Up Mayo and Spud. I want to thank our guest Midnight. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's been it's been really fun talking to you, man. Really. De nada, cabrón, no hay <laughs> Okay, so um, <laughs> this is uh, if everyone wants to say their goodbyes. We'll start with Spud. Peace. Adios. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, sorry. Uh, no, no, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is awesome. Uh, I, um, I also, uh, it, was, it was a privilege to, to have a podcast with uh, Midnight as well. Like, like we said before, you've been crushing it with all the, um, the story videos and that. And uh, I think the DLC is going to really uh, nourish, nourish your channel for a bit because they're, they're going to go deeper and harder, it seems, with that. But, uh, yeah, thanks for having me and uh, Grip and Terror, everyone. Catch up. Yeah, pretty much the same from me. I want to thank Midnight again for joining us. It was it was a good time. Always nice to sit down and chat about some Doom for a bit, and uh, it's always nice to get different perspectives and different channel types around. You know, variety is the spice of life. So, uh, had a good time as always. Appreciate everyone having me. I want a, a quickly weekly reminder to remind everyone that every Friday at seven thirty p.m. ET, Tokyo Punch Out and I do Friday Night Fights Community Competitive Battle Mode Activity. If you want to see what the highest gameplay level of battle mode looks like uh look no further than every friday night on twitch.tv forward slash bethesda 7 30 p.m et it's all right there 
Excellent. Uh, well, midnight, those guys had a bit of a longer send off. I don't know if there's anything more you want to say before we cut it. No, it's completely fine. Those oh, okay. gentlemen are legends, but um, no, thank you for having me, bro. Like, it's a pleasure. I was really nervous at the beginning. I think you could tell I couldn't even like answer your question properly about my videos, but yeah, it was fucking fantastic. This was fun. And yeah, I this was fucking estuvien pinche verga. Vámonos. Nice. Okay, uh all right. This is Mayo signing off and uh see you guys in the next episode.